President Donald Trump inking the first phase of a trade deal with China, sending global markets higher to kick off the new year. Yahoo Finance's Julia LaRoche had a chance to sit down with a very special guest at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, and discuss the next steps in U.S.-China trade negotiations. Joining me is Orit Gadish, chairman of Bain and Company. Orit, thank you so much for joining us at the World Economic Forum. Thank you for having me. Well, there's a lot of discussion about the China trade uh, negotiations. Is this the beginning of the end? If you mean is it the beginning of the end of the negotiations and people sort of getting towards what they wanted, no, I think it's not even the end of the beginning. I think it's a small step towards uh, getting what each country wants. And almost by definition, both countries can't have what they want. So there's going to be, I think, quite a lot of negotiations still to come. I think it will take quite a number of years, too. And um, there is something that's going on there which is beyond just the negotiations on trade. It's, it's, it's really beginning to be and becoming a negotiation for supremacy in certain technologies and on the world stage. And I think the people who think that they can become the single power at this point are probably not helping themselves or the world. I think the way to look at China for the United States is not how to, not how to challenge them or how to compete with them, but uh, but how to make sure that we have space for us, there's space for them, and there are actually places where we can cooperate. Because otherwise, I don't think it's going to be a very nice place for all of us. Well, I mean, that's uh, pretty um, you know striking stuff to hear. I have to imagine because in your role, you talk to a lot of CEOs all around the world. Mm -hmm. This is probably top of mind for them, but what kind of conversations are you having with them? What are you hearing? What are they concerned about? They're concerned about an awful lot of things these days. Um, first, what's going on between China, the U.S., and Europe's place in the world is very important for CEOs, independent of where they are. The, um, the tension between the U.S. and China caused a lot of people to have to rethink their supply chain, to rethink markets, to think not only for now, but for the future we're going to be. It means also rethinking technologies in some cases to replace part of the supply chain. That's true for Chinese companies, true for American companies, and true for European companies. There's also a lot of discussion about where will the winning technologies end up being. And even here in the forum, we've heard a lot of people say, well, the United States and China have the winning platform technologies. So where is Europe's place in that, including Europeans? And I think that Europe actually has a very important role to play because all those technologies are going to be running on 5G. That's going to be the infrastructure. And after that, 6G or whatever comes after that. And currently, China definitely has the capability to do that in a number of com uh, companies. Um, South Korea does. And then Europe does. There is no company in the United States that can do it for historical reasons about choices that were made when mobility started. So the surviving companies that today are uh, actually engineering and selling 5G are in Europe and in, in, the, in China, basically, Korea. And if Europe, so Europe has in, in, in Nokia and Ericsson a technology that is critical for what's going to happen to the way the technologies are going to move around and to just about every commerce, every interaction that is going to happen in the near future. And if we don't make sure, if they don't make sure that those two companies, of the Europe, that Europe actually continues with that, and if America doesn't rise to the occasion, I don't know right now who will, then there's a chance that in the next round, when there's 6G and the Chinese are already thinking about 6G, there will be nobody other than those companies to provide it to the rest of the world. Could that mean that we're talking about trade, a trade war? Could we also be in a tech war? Is, is oh, we are. We are in, not in a war, I hope, but we're in a very great competition. Um, President Xi announced several years ago where China wanted to be a global leader, not just Chinese leader, but a global leader in quite a number of technologies. That sort of woke up the rest of the world. Now, if you were traveling to China a lot, as I, I was for 15 years, you knew that this was coming. But that sort of got everybody to stand up. China has very legitimate, legitimate reasons to want to compete. And by the way, it has great capabilities. China is not uh, just stealing technology, as people say. China is developing an awful lot of technology. In the war of R&D, or in the R&D area, 
the West probably still has a leg up on R, but in D, the Chinese are way ahead of the rest of the world. So there is a legitimate uh, sort of spot to talk about uh, how do we compete as opposed to how to become superior. And that is a conflict that, or a, a competition maybe, that hasn't quite played out. And I think people really need to think about the long term, not just the short term when they talk about trade. And we're about to wrap up the World Economic Forum. Um, you're part of the Board of Trustees here. Uh, and you've been coming for many, many years. What's kind of your sense right now? What are you kind of reading from this year's annual meeting? Well, the biggest topic uh, coming out of here really has to do with environmental change. And, uh, and it is about time. Uh, and you hear it, it's not just the teenagers who are protesting, it's actually in, in meetings that are not on the agenda, where CEOs were meeting and chairmen were meeting, there have been papers that have been signed, uh, really talking about what needs to be done. And, and there's, there's not that much question left, because if you look at the, the amount of money that is needed, we're talking about about $8 trillion. Philanthropy is about, is less than a billion. Foundations about a million, a billion and a half. The U.S. government budget is $4 billion. We need everybody to be part of this. Oh, we're not going to actually survive the 21st century, which is a panel I just moderated. Yeah, I heard all about it. Well, Orit Gadish, chairman of Bain & Company, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.